Hello there, Aries. Welcome to your no care reading. So, um, when I was shuffling out the spread, I saw two images for you, and um, I'm not sure which one comes first, but they're definitely related. Um, so I'm just going to relay those images to you, and then we'll go over the spread, okay? So the first thing that I saw, which was pretty amazing, was uh, there's you're at a, a scene at a circus, okay? And there is a big cannon, and this was back in the days where they shoot people at cannons. And there's this little boy, he looks really, really young, and he had like a superhero cape, uh, a red cape on, and like, you know, a speedo outfit. And he's... Um, getting into the mouth of the cannon someone shoots him off and then he he kind of rolls up into a ball and then he rolls a, a, a vast distance and he lands on a net and then he stands up and you know the crowd cheers okay so that's the first image that i saw the second image uh that i saw and i think it should have gone first but i saw this monk he looks like a medieval monk and you know how uh, back in the days if you look at images and, and drawings from the medieval time period the monks their heads are bald but they have like hair that's uh, growing on the side okay um, so he's like a medieval monk in this really dark castle in his study and um, it's really dark outside you can see the moon and you can see the the steeple in the chapel like uh, outside the window it's really dark um, he's reading, pouring over many, many, many books uh, by candlelight. And when I saw this uh, image, I immediately think about, you know, the scribes, okay? The scribes, the people, um, the, the monks are the first ones that are literate, especially in medieval time. Not a lot of people have access to education. So they're the ones that keep ledgers. They're the ones that are really incredibly educated. They know letters. They, um, they, they, they write down like, um, they, they keep inventory, keep ledgers, but they also write down like the daily activities as to what happened today. And they're pretty much the first people that, that keep like a written history of things that have unfolded. Okay, so I feel like this guy, he's in his study by candlelight obsessively pouring over looking through researching and and trying to find something okay so he was like very very adamant about trying to find something so those are the two images that i saw and um it was really difficult for me to try to get those images to to kind of like tell the story okay so what i feel is happening here is um there's something that you are doing and I feel like for many of you, this is a, a part of like a, a job. For those who are self-employed, I feel like you're trying to launch something. And uh, you're obsessively trying to do the preliminary background research, the market research um, to... I, I'm hearing like patent. So for some of you, you might be inventors. You might be pouring over all the patent history to make sure that this thing that you are trying to bring forth into the world has not been done before, like a, a violation of patent, for example, patent laws. Um, and then I feel like for others of you, especially if you're not self-employed, you're working for other people. I feel like you're trying to look into the regulations, the rules and the regulations as to how something was done in the past, and then you're trying to bend the rules, okay? I, I feel like there's something here about not wanting to follow what was done in the past, wanting to trailblaze, wanting to create your own path. And I feel like you don't have a precedent. You don't have like, you know, the, the thing that comes before for you to guide you. You're kind of like starting from scratch. You're starting on your own. And I feel like there's a lot of risk associated with it, okay? Hence the, the little kid um, being launched out of a cannon, okay? So like, um, I, I feel like in some way physically you're thinking like, how is this going to work? What exactly is it going to look like? And so you're, it hasn't been done before, so you don't have an example to go by. You just have the idea in your head and you're trying to bring it forth into the real world. And the real world is like constrained by the law of physics. And so you're just, you know, trying to do that, that research into a field or into an area, a specific, um, 
a specific feel that you're not very familiar with, okay? And so I feel for many of you, this is like a very huge um, new undertaking that you're planning to start off and you feel that it's gonna have like a tremendous yield either financially monetarily or just you know uh, it, it's something that you feel that needs to be done and you're the person that wants to lay out the preliminary uh, groundwork for this okay so this is like a huge undertaking that you're kind of like a, a responsibility that you're taking on mainly because I do feel for many of you normally um, you don't have the patience to kind of like you know um, do the, the research sit there and pour over volumes and volumes of, of, of things to dictate how this is gonna happen but for some reason for some of you you might be personally invested in it or you might feel like no this is this is the right thing to do I want to do it right or I want to do this for somebody there's like an emotional um, connection or like an emotional reason why you want to do it for others of you you're like somehow invested in it where you're just like no this is something that needs to be done because it's going to lay the groundwork for what's to come and i want to lay the groundwork in the direction that i want to see things happen in the future okay i do sense we have here the judgment card and the justice card okay so this deals heavily with legality the just justice card this is about weighing out the pros and cons okay what is right morally ethically versus what is right like internally and then we have here the judgment card as well um, light bulb moment okay some some major idea that you are trying to bring forth into the world it's almost like I'm getting a very strong like Aquarian you know influence here where you're like so ahead of your time uh, you have these ideas swirling in your head and I, I feel like you're trying to conceptualize it you're trying to make sense of it you're trying to like um, sort out these creative ideas put them into little neat boxes so that you can understand exactly what you are trying to work with I also feel like it's a major ethical or a moral issue that you're grappling with okay um, whenever we are linked up with laws and re regalities and rules and regulations i feel like for especially for many of you you have an innate sense of what is wrong and what is right and i feel like there might be some type of a moral conflict between what you feel is right what you feel is wrong versus what the laws dictate is right or what the law dictates is wrong so there might be some type of a a legal framework or just some type of a, a framework that you're working within that you feel needs to be changed and you're trying to find justifications for how to change it you're trying to find evidence you're trying to find like um, nuances in the law so that you can bend them and I feel like you're doing this because internally you're driven by your own sense of what's right and what's wrong and so you're trying to you know uh, shape it or fashion it in a matter that speaks to you so I feel like for many of you there might be a situation in a work environment where you're just like this is not fair this on paper it says this but in my mind in my head in my heart it feels in it, it feels wrong and so you're trying to you know find a way to get around it is what I'm sensing okay so this is coming in really really strongly and then going to the second image um, this is what I'm sensing here is there's a situation where once again you know you're trying to bring four things forth into the world it requires a lot of um, it requires a lot of background research from it requires a lot of background research from from your from your side and you're the more that you read the more ideas come to mind but I feel like there isn't like a, a running thread to string all of these ideas together and so in that way you might feel like you're kind of um, ill-prepared to 
make the connections, to to make the dots, to connect the dots in some fashion. And you also feel like you might need to speak to a specialist. You might need some type of an an expert in their field in order to help you, in order to conceptualize, not only conceptualize, but like to to draw out how it's going to be implemented or how it's going to be made in the real world. Okay, and I feel like there's somebody coming in. Someone who's an expert in their field. We have here the Queen of Swords. I usually think of this as someone who is uh, super rational. Okay, they they work with rules, they work with laws, they work in the legal profession, and they are also their their mind is really really fast when it comes to. Uh, making connections, connecting the dots between one disparate idea and uh, connecting it to another. So I feel like if you're kind of like fumbling around in the dark and you're just like, I need help. I really don't quite understand how to make sense of everything that's in front of me. The more research I do, the more um, I, I read up on something, the more confused I get, or the more ideas that come out of it. And I just feel scattered and I feel all over the place. I feel like you have an expert coming in that is going to be able to help you through this process that's going to be able to make sense of it for you for some of you i do feel like you know it, it's just like there are too many things too many interests too many hobbies too many uh ideas you want to get off the ground and you don't even know um what to do first so i i do feel in a way that the 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 solid groundwork has not been laid and you're still in that process of doing that so I just want to say as well, um, you know, the there is a Mercury retrograde that's going to permeate the entire month of uh, November. It starts on the 31st of October, and we're going to be in the Mercury retrograde period for about three weeks of November, and the last week is pretty much the uh, shadow period. So this is a time to really lay that foundation, lay that groundwork, do the preliminary research, make sure there's no holes in your theories, and make sure that everything is done, and um, I keep hearing like conceptualize, make sure that you have a very, very, very solid foundation laid out before you start doing anything, and the time for you to start doing anything should be outside of this Mercury retrograde cycle. So I would say the month of December looks really, really right, especially if we are in the time of Sagittarius, which is a fellow uh, fire sign. You know, when the sun is in Sagittarius, it's going to make a trine to your sign, Aries, and it's going to... Um, it's more conducive for you know bringing you recognition bringing you into the limelight and making sure that your plans and ideas and and whatever you're trying to implement is foolproof because you're going to get a lot of visibility and so i feel like the month of november is not really the time to draw attention to yourself because of the mercury retrograde period it is time for you to kind of lay low pour things over understand things read up on things do the preliminary research have all those ideas floating around you don't need to string them into any type of a coherent thought you just need to you know take them into account but don't implement anything until the month of december so i hope that makes sense because if things are not laid out well and thought about well and you know um I want to say, if they're not done well, by the month of December, when the limelight is on you, or when the spotlight is on you, that's when, you know, all the holes in your theories will start to show, okay? I'm seeing that um, it's like light streaming through a, um, a it's, it's almost like a, a window with curtains and then light streaming through. If there are holes in the curtains, you're going to start to see those... Um, those holes cast a shadow and, and you're going to start to see the light. So I feel like this is not a time for you to get that limelight. It's going to come in the month of December. Okay. So enough about that. I, I do want to move on to the cards because there's something coming through here. Um, first of all, we have here the eight of wands and the eight of swords and both of these falling on top of each other. So the eight of wands, this is massive amounts of communication. And the eight of swords is a situation where we keep ourselves stuck, we keep ourselves bound, and we feel like um, we don't have all the information that we need in order to move forward, in order to make a decision. So what I feel is happening here is um, 
there's a major, major idea that、uh, you have. Okay, I feel for many of you, you might be like、um, consultants. You might be experts in your field. You are kind of like that.、Um, you're you're kind of like that voice of、um, ingenuity. That voice. It it seems to me like you're. Judgment, guiding light. Okay, you're providing a lot of swift, short, concise communication to bring people out of a state of confusion. Okay, you guys are very like no nonsense, no holds bar. Whatever comes to mind, you say it. Like you rarely have a filter, and I feel like because of this carefree. A lot of people might think it's reckless, but what I feel is it's a childlike innocence. It's sort of like let's just do it first and then read the instructions later. Okay, let's just rely on our intuition to assemble this thing without having to read the instructions because we all know, you know, intuitively where things are supposed to go, and and you have that kind of like blind faith. Where you're able to like get things done, push people along, move people along, and、um, I'm sensing, you know, start things off the ground, get things off the ground, ground, get things running, inspiring people, and、um, making like not letting people make excuses for why they're not getting things done. So I feel like you're kind of like the voice of、um, not so much the words of reason, but like that that light in a tunnel. To help guide people along, because you're very, very bold and brave, and you venture into unknown territories. What I'm sensing here is、um, there's definitely a situation where you're kind of like guiding somebody, and I feel like there's legality, like legal issues surrounding it. And once again, I mentioned before, you know, the whole sense of legality. What is right? What is written down as you know the 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 law of the land? You don't agree with it, okay? You feel like there's something lacking here. It's、uh, the law or whatever is written down is very, very self-serving. So you're trying to find a way to bend the situation, and so many of you are kind of like working behind the scenes. Many of you are trying to find loopholes. Many of you are trying to find. Ways to get around things and to do exactly what you want. Like I'm sensing finding shortcuts, finding like、uh, the quickest point from A to B, without having to sort of circumnavigate. You know, like with, without having to kind of like dodge obstacles left and right. How do we shoot from here to there in the quickest manner? Okay, shooting out of that canyon. And so, as a result of it, I feel like you're in a position. Either to guide people from all the obstacles that are kind of like、uh, strewn in their path, you're trying to find the quickest route from A to B to guide others, and you're trying to find as well kind of like the boldest move for you to make. And I feel like you're just gonna land on your feet, okay? Like that kid being shot out of the canyon. If you're in a position where you feel like I don't really know. You feel shaken, or you feel like I don't really know how to realistically implement this in the real world. I feel that it's going, it's going to really take off for you. So that state of confusion, where you're not able to make a decision, there's going to be that light bulb moment that will allow you to know how to move forward. That will allow you to know how to move on. Okay, so I feel like the energy is very, very conducive for having. Some type of a, a major breakthrough. You're getting like spiritual advice. You're getting a lot of information. To if it's like a land,、uh, a long-standing problem, and you've been mulling it over for some time, and you felt like the more research you do, the more confused you are. It's going to hit you in a way where you're going to be able to find the simplest. Way to get from A to B to solve your problems, to jump over your hurdles, to kind of blast through these obstacles in order to move on. Okay, I'm also sensing here a very significant person that's going to be entering your life. Okay, we have here the Queen of、um, Swords. So this is air sign, air energy, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. And what I feel is, for those of you who are dealing with an air sign or even dealing with.、Um, Dealing with、uh, somebody who's very, who's a little bit more on the icy end, 
they ask a lot of questions they uh they try to really understand you um i feel like polar opposites okay so your your polar opposite might be libra and libras are kind of like the lawyers of the zodiac they like to ask questions they like to see both sides of the story they like to um they ask a lot of questions because as an air sign they like to know they like to learn they like to understand things from with like a um oh They, they like to have like a holistic view of a situation before they form their opinion or make up their mind. And so if you're dealing with someone like that, it doesn't have to be an air sign. It's just they exhibit the energy of someone who asks a lot of questions and they want to understand. You're going to feel a little bit like you're under scrutiny, like you're under a microscope. Uh, like they're judging you or they're judgmental or they're um, trying to poke holes in your theories. But what I feel is, in the process of interacting with this person, they're going to make you stronger. They're going to make you able to defend your, your ideas, defend your beliefs, and to solidify and strengthen your ideas and strengthen your beliefs so that your theories have no holes. Your theories are foolproof. So I feel like you have somebody in your midst that is like this. And what I'm sensing is, for some of you, this might be like a romantic partner uh, who might, who you feel might be overly critical. They, you feel they might be a little bit cold, a little bit distant, a little bit um, contrarian. You saying one thing and they don't really see things that way. So they offer their opinion. And you guys have had a lot of clashes in the past where you don't see eye to eye. Um, You feel, I honestly feel like, you feel like they might have belittled you by the way in which they interact, by the way, the, by the questions that they ask you. You feel like they don't support you or you feel like they're constantly poking holes in your theories. And what I see in this spread is this person doesn't mean to do that. And I feel almost like... I'm seeing like, you know, walking around on eggshells, okay? Um, I, I feel like you, you felt a little bit judged. You felt a little bit like you couldn't be yourself. You felt uncomfortable and you, you didn't understand why. You felt like, you felt like they didn't trust you or you felt like they just, um, they shoot down your ideas. You felt very unsupported, okay? And so I, I feel like this isn't this wasn't like an easy relationship for some of you. This could be I, I definitely feel a very strong love connection. So it could be like a love interest, a love partner, or even like a family member that you, for whatever reason, you really wanted to please this person. Okay, and um, I'm also sensing like you know it's somebody that you hold in high regards. Okay, they're on a pedestal. They're on the scale here. That you hold them in really high regards, and for whatever reason, you you are very eager to please this person. You really like this person. Um, they don't mean to be harsh. They don't mean to make you feel like they're poking holes in your theories. It's just they can't help themselves. The way if their in uh, if their curiosity is piqued. If they, if you're saying something that really uh, strikes at one of their many interests, they're going to ask questions. They're going to ask a lot of follow-up questions, and it can feel really uncomfortable. Um, and you're not the first person that they have made feel like they're under scrutiny, like they're under a microscope, like they're cross-examining you. You're not the first person, and I feel like this person has a tendency to do this, and I feel like they isolate a lot of people. They might have isolated friends because of their behavior. So I, I'm sensing here a person that doesn't mean it. They don't mean any harm and they don't understand how they come across and they don't understand how harsh they are with their words and their judgment. And they don't understand that um, people feel judged or feels that they're too judgmental and people feel uncomfortable in their presence. Okay, so I, I feel like you're dealing with a situation like that. Where um, somebody might be asking you, and they're asking you so that they can understand where you're coming from, so that they can understand your ideas. And 
So, you know, let your guard down, definitely, when you are interacting with this person, because I feel like they mean no harm, okay? When we're coming from a space, anytime we're coming from a space where we are constantly questioning somebody else's motives, Three of Cups, this is a celebratory card, an exchange of communication, ideas, getting together, having a really, really good time, and you have this, you know, a, a flow, a really soft I want to say a uh, soft flow of energy and then there's like you know mutual exchange right of ideas of energy of support and then all of a sudden this person comes into the picture and they're kind of icy and rational and just you know um stone face poker face so you don't really know where they're coming from so i feel like you know they 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 have a habit of doing this and they're not really aware of it and so anytime that we have an interaction with another person we just need to take everything at face value because i feel like the minute somebody feels like you know like a per, uh, a perceived slight or they you get a perception that someone is um is like negative or trying to shoot down your plans the minute we get defensive in a social interaction that's when we kind of like uh, imagine things or energies that are not there so I feel like in the situation it is best to let our walls down if they ask questions just answer their questions and I feel like it's going to create a more even flow of energy okay um, for some of you, you have somebody in your um, vicinity where there were like constant, a lot of communication, like we have here, you know, uh, arrows of love, a lot of communication happening all at the same time and things are great. And then you go through a period where there's like zero communication, eight of swords, being stuck in a prison of swords and you're just like, what just happened? Uh, which way do I go? So I feel like you're dealing with someone who you feel is blowing very, very, very hot and cold. You don't know from one day to the next where you stand with them. I keep hearing bipolar. Um, and I'm also hearing as well um, somebody who's very stuck in their head and they might have like a gazillion things or a gazillion ideas that they're working on. So they're jumping from the realm of the mind. They're um, constantly thinking about other things, okay? So it's not that they don't have time for you or it's not that, you know, they're... Um, I feel like they're very, very busy, and I know that sounds terrible. There's no excuse. You know, if you really want to make something happen, if you really want to reach out, you want to prioritize a communication or a specific person in your life, being busy is no excuse. We find time for, for things and for people that matter. But I feel like there's like periods of like a lot of heavy communication with this person, and then you go through a drought, and then they come back, and then there's a lot of heavy communication and you're just never sure where you stand with this person and you're frustrated and i feel like you're you're thinking about the worst you're thinking about like worst case scenario they're probably talking to other people they have a lot of other options they have a lot of other people in their mind and i feel for many of you you might retaliate by you know uh going out a lot you know trying to meet other people and so when you're going through that period of drought and you, there's no communication from the other person, uh, you are waiting on the communication, but at the same time, you're just like, you know, um, I, I, I do see like a retaliation where if there's no communication, you draw your attention elsewhere. And so I just feel like the other person has a lot of things on their plate. And once again, I'm, I'm not saying like it's an excuse, but I do feel like they're I, I I'm sensing like you and the other person the way in which you do things are very different and so there's lack of uh, understanding from your end to their end where they're coming from why they're like this and then from their end to your end what there's lack of understanding why you need certain things you might need a lot of communication and I feel like they need a lot of downtime. Does that make sense? So I feel like that's, um, you're, you're like polar opposites and the way in which you need others, the way in which you express love, the way in which you express concern and, you know, 
the ways in which you you show affection is very very different. You might need that entangled, you know, constant communication, a lot of validation. They need a lot of distance and alone time and downtime. Okay,、uh, if the connection is there in their mind, it's already there. We don't need to, you know, reinvent the wheel.、Uh, we just need to have separate lives. So I, I definitely feel like one person needs a lot of intimacy and and reassurance and、uh, attention, and then the other person needs a lot of. Me time, a lot of downtime, a lot of space, and there is a potential here for the two of you to kind of like bridge this divide and to be able to kind of understand where the other person is coming from. I don't see like a situation where there's like、um, from their end. I don't see that they're dating other people, running around with other people, and things like that. I do feel like you might have thought that, but I don't see it from their end. But I do sense that they're wondering as well、um, the times in which you guys are not communicating. What are you up to? Are you out there dating other people with the Three of Cups, like getting to know other people, trying to you know forget them? And then we also have here the Nine of Cups, being comfortable and happy and satiated on your own, not needing them, and you know living your life. So I feel like there's a potential here for like a lot of misunderstanding between you and another person. If that has been the case in the past, there's a coming together, a reckoning, communication, things being revived. Okay, and then I also feel they're coming back in, wanting to communicate. Queen of Swords, Nine of Cups, wanting to communicate, wanting to you know understand where you're at. And the the blue color is coming out very strongly here, which in the, the blue eyes and the blue color, I do feel like you want them to see. Okay, you want them to see that you're okay without them, that you're happy without them. But once again, I feel like this person means a lot to you, and you want that validation from them. You want to see. So if this has been somebody that has kind of like、uh, left you high and dry in the past. I feel like a part of you really wants to show them, really wants them to see that you're okay, you're happy, you're dating, your social life is really thriving and taking off, or your dating life is really thriving and taking off. Like you want to see, some of you might be posting on social media,、um, posting like、um, you know that you're out and about, you're having a good time, you're enjoying the single life. If this is an ex. And then I definitely feel like you know they're thinking about you. They're trying to access you, access the photos, access the information. They're definitely physically seeing to make sense of it. Okay, so I, I do see a、um, tit for tat retaliatory type of an energy here, where you want somebody to see that you're doing well, that you're doing fine, that you're happy.、Um, but once again, it. Still points me to the fact that you are wanting some type of validation from this person. Okay, if it is an ex, I feel like it's going to be the end of it. If it is an ex, and、um, you just feel like you go through periods where you hear nothing from them, and then they come back in expecting everything to be okay. What I have is a stoppage in communication. Four of Swords. This is taking a break, and then we have a. The Five of Swords, and I, I, I usually think of this as like mincing, dicing, something to kind of like cut it up into little pieces. It's like I no longer need this connection. I no longer need this communication. I've been waiting for so long. It's finally coming in at a point where I'm at peace with myself. I'm happy, and I'm doing really well. So I don't need it. So I feel like many of you will be at a position where you get to kind of like give this person a piece of your mind. You know, like I don't need you. I'm doing okay on my own. I am very, very satiated and incredibly happy, and so I don't need the the crumbs and you know all of this that you're bringing into the picture. 
But then on the other hand, I do feel like many of you, you're dealing with somebody where there is a lot of uh, misunderstanding. Uh, what they need and what you need are totally different things. You might want to be the one, you know, going out, having fun, wanting to be the life of the, par the party. And the other person, they, they crave a more peaceful, a quieter existence. And I feel like there will be like a, a bridging of the gap where the two of you will kind of like meet in the middle and try to, I want to say like compromise, okay? Like compromise. So. I'm getting a very strong polar opposite here and once again your polar opposite is Libra. Libra is coming out very strongly in this um, spread. So for just a, a warning, for those of you who are dealing with a Libra person, I do sense there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding and I would just urge you to kind of, you know, slip yourself in their shoes to really understand and, and, and mull over and think about what they have said to you in the past because I feel like you guys are talking over one another. You're speaking from here, they're here, and then the, the it's like, you know, the two shall never meet. So I feel like there's a lot of uh, potential for misunderstanding. And so you kind of have to go back, cycle back into your, you know, memory Rolodex of all the conversations you've had, of all the things that they've told you, because I feel like they might have said a lot of things and you misinterpreted a different way. And likewise, you know, this um, energy flows both ways. You might have said things that they have completely misinterpreted. And so I feel like there is a definitely miscommunication that can be fixed and the, the, the distance can be bridged between you and this person, okay? In particular, if you're dealing with a Libra, because I, I feel like um, one person feels like the other person is withholding information or withholding affection, and so they find affection elsewhere. And that can be you or that can be them. But I feel the energy of one person wanting to retaliate because the other person, they feel the other person is withdrawing. And so they, you know, find affection elsewhere, find attention elsewhere, seeks attention elsewhere. And then I also feel like when one person wants to be, you know, wants to cuddle, wants to be intimate, the other person is like tired. And so your timing is really off. Your communication is really off between um, the two of you. And I feel like, you know, that's, that's a situation that can be easily fixed with just the right communication, with just, you know, letting the barriers fall down and approaching one another with like an open mind, okay? So I just feel like there are a lot of issues here that can be hashed out, that can be revisited for... Um, for resolution, for reconciliation, okay? I definitely feel reconciliation between you and a person that you feel might not have time for you. They might have had like very uh, inconsistent communication. So I feel like that's coming in. But either way, I do feel there is a really strong love connection here where you, you are dealing with a polar opposite. And I do sense as well, there might have been a lot of difficulties um, in the past when it comes to resources, sharing resources. Um, resources might have been very scarce, but the two of you have finally um, kind of like bridged that gap. Two people are really, really doing well and they're pulling together their resources. Seven of Pentacles here, okay? Waiting for that harvest. But this is like a long standing process, uh, nurturing something, watching it grow over many, many months, okay? Over a long period of time, many years for some of you. So I feel like. Things are looking really good, especially if you have a partner and you both share resources and things have been hard in the past. There's going to be a major, major uplift, escalation and, and resolution when it comes to financial resources, all right? So um, Aries, I'm going to leave it at that, all right? I wish you all a very wonderful uh, November 2019. And uh, if you are interested in a um, personal reading, I do have a link in the description box below for a colleague of mine. Her name is Bridget. She is phenomenal. I highly recommend that you get a reading with her. The link is in the description box below. And also, um, if you're interested in this deck, um, 
the local artist has reached out to me and she told me you know to include a link to her website where you can purchase this deck as well as all the other artwork that she has available for sale the link is also in the description box below okay i wish you all the best and i will be back for the month of december and i'll talk to you guys soon take care